Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas, 42,000 plus people, maybe 45, huge numbers here at AWS reInvent 2017 Amazon Web Services Annual Conference. Wall to wall coverage, our third day. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE with Stu Miniman. We're here with Andy Jassy, the CEO of Amazon Web Services. Andy, great to see you again. Great to see you, thanks for having me on. Congratulations, um, we had a great chat a week ago. You and I sat down for breakfast and you kind of laid out, you kind of laid out the plan for the show here. Um, but I, you kind of left a lot out. There's so much. <laughs> I mean, like, you were holding back, and I you thought were I there for three hours, John. I you thought know. I had a great story. You needed the four-hour breakfast. Oh, it was yeah. damn, it was good. What an announcement! I mean, your keynote, two and a half hours. I mean, the longest keynote I've seen. Um, just non-stop announcements. You went right into it, no preamble, right into the uh, announcements. How many announcements did you do? Like 50 plus, or what no, was the I, number? I think, I think there were 22 new services and features announced in the keynote I did. All right, so you got to look back now as, as it's coming down to an end, the, re, the party's tonight. What's your take? I'm obviously you're absorbing yep. it still. Are you still kind of like numb, pinch me moment? What's, what's, <laughs> the, what's the vibe? What are you feeling right now? Uh, you know, it's been a fantastic week, and uh, this is our favorite week of the year, just having the chance to spend the week with our entire community. And I think that it's been a very successful week in terms of what we were trying to accomplish, which was, you know, it's always first and foremost a learning and education conference. And I think that people feel like the array of sessions they've been able to go to and what they've learned, both about the services all together, the new services we announced, and then just especially what other peers are doing on top of the platform, I think has been really valuable. And I've had a lot of customer meetings over the last few days, and. The, the conversations have been so excited. You know, people saying, I just can't believe, you know, you guys already had so much functionality, but I just can't believe the uh, amount of innovation and capability that you guys just released over the last couple of days. And several people said to me, you know, I, had a, I knew I was having a meeting with you, so I had a list of things I was going to ask you to, to deliver. And, and during your keynote, I kept going, check, check, check. So <laughs> yeah. they were really positive, excited conversations. So talk about the flywheel that's going on with you guys right now. I use that term, kind of, uh, and, and uh, you know, pun in intended, because you got some flywheel going on. As you add more services, I detailed in my story, after we met, I teased out, this is a competitive advantage for you. You're listening, listening to customers, but you're putting out more services. There's leverage in those services, so it's good for customers, but I worry about the complexity and they might worry about the complexity. How do you talk about that and how does your team address that? Because, I mean, tsunami of services. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that the first thing to remember is that simply because we have a lot of functionality doesn't mean that customers have to know about every single service and every single feature. They use what they need when they need it and they don't have to pay for it up front. And so, you know, one of the reasons we release so many things during the year, you know, over 1,300 services and features this year alone, and, and about 70 new releases just at reInvent this week, is that when you have millions of active customers, you have lots of diversity in those customers. You know, lots of different businesses, lots of different priorities, lots of different needs. And so, you know, even in the set of customer meetings I've had this week, uh, the first question I asked every single customer I sat down with is, what are your impressions? What are you excited about? And there were some who said, oh, I can't believe, I'm so excited about SageMaker. It's going to completely change the accessibility of doing machine learning in my org. And some said, oh, I, I really, really wanted those language um, application services in machine learning. Others were totally focused on the multi-master Aurora and the global tables for DynamoDB and the graph database. And then still others, said, you know, I love ECS, but I've wanted a Kubernetes option, and then now that I don't even have to manage containers at the server level and I can manage it at the task level is what I'm yeah. excited about. And still others yeah. who are IoT customers, that's what they cared about. So we have so many customers it, with such diversity in their businesses and their priorities that they all have a bunch of needs. You got all the goodness of AWS, them. keep on delivering on that. And, and I want to get your reaction to something that we've been talking about on theCUBE all week, which is, and well I've been pushing it, Stu and I have been kind of debating it, but we see a clear 
path towards a new renaissance in software development and invention. And it comes down to some of the things that you guys have enabled. Uh, we saw a lot of people get excited by some of the deep learning, obviously Alexa for Business and some other things. It's easier to do stuff now at the application layer because you don't have to build the full stack. So we're, you guys are talking about a reimagining architecture. That was Werner's keynote. It's all kind of pointing to a new renaissance, a new way to create value. What's your reaction to that and how do you share that to customers because it's kind of a new, new, new model. Yeah, well I think that this has been happening now for you know, the last 10 years and I think that uh, people aren't building applications for the most part the way they used to. It, you know, if, you, uh, if you're building new applications and you're trying to build all the hosting software and all the storage software and all the database software and all the messaging and queuing and analytics and, and uh, machine learning, you're just wasting resource because, because when, you, when you have the option of using 120 services from a platform like AWS that has thousands and thousands of people working on it, delivering on average three and a half new features a day that you could choose to use or not, it's so much faster and so much more empowering to let your builders take advantage of that platform. You get from idea to implementation in orders of magnitude faster using the cloud. And that, you know, what keeps happening is we just keep adding more and more capabilities that allow people to well, do more. Well, don't forget now even the marketplace. We just had Barry Russell on, and you got now are bringing a global reach opportunity. So not only can you help them get to market faster with coding and building value, there's growth. So it's not just park in the marketplace yeah. and hope that something happens they're taking advantage of that growth. I think it's a really important point. It's, it's not just the set of services that we're building, but there are thousands and thousands of ISVs and SaaS providers who are also building products on top of AWS where their businesses are growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, one of the interesting things about the marketplace, I don't know how much you guys have talked about this in the past or, or currently, is that most, if you talk to most software buyers, they hate the process. It, you know, it's just how long it takes, the negotiation oh, process, oh, legal. the EA. And by the way, most of the software sellers also hate the process. And so, if you can find a mechanism, which is what we're trying to provide with the AWS Marketplace, where buyers and sellers can complete those transactions and find each other so much faster, it totally changes the world of buying software and consuming software. Andy, I came in this week pretty excited to look at the, the adoption of serverless, and you know, congratulations, you've impressed. A lot of announcements, talked to a lot of customers. The thing that probably impressed me the most is it went from being kind of just Lambda uh, to really integrated all the services, a much more holistic view. But you made a comment that, I, that a lot of us in the community kind of you know, poked at a little, which is if you were to build AWS today in 2017, you would build it. You know, Amazon, on, you mean? Uh, Amazon, yes, yeah. sorry, Amazon uh, on it today. Now, I've talked to startups that are building all serverless, but you know, Amazon's a gigantic company. And you know, I, I talked to Tim, I talked to the team. There's a lot of things I can't do. So is this a goal or you know, just being a kind, of, kind of the, the, the future? Or you know, do, do you feel that I can put you know, a, a, a global you know, company of, of your size uh, you know, built with, yeah, uh, with it's, it today? It's, yeah, it's a good question. And you know, I really, the comment I made was really about um, directionally what Amazon would do. You know, in the, in the very earliest days of AWS, Jeff used to say a lot, if I were starting Amazon today, I'd have built it on top of AWS. We didn't have all the capability and all the functionality at that very moment, but he knew what was coming and he saw what people were still able to accomplish even with where the services were at that point. I think the same thing is true here with Lambda, which is I think if Amazon were starting today, it's a given they would build it on the cloud. And I think we, with a lot of the applications that comprise Amazon's consumer business, we would build those on, on our serverless capabilities. Now, we still have plenty of capabilities and features and functionality we need to add to, to Lambda and our various serverless um, services. So that may not be true from the get-go right now, but I think if you look at the hundreds of thousands of customers who are building on top of Lambda, and lots of real applications, you know, FINRA has built a good chunk of their MarketWatch application on top of Lambda, and 
Thomson Reuters has built you know, their, one of their key analytics apps. Like, people are building real serious things on top of Lambda, and the pace of iteration you'll see there will increase as well, and I, I really believe that to be true over the next year or two. A Andy, you talked a little bit more about competition than, than I'm used to hearing in the keynote. I mean, there's been some pokes at some of the database stuff and that migration, but uh, you know, when it walk, talked about, there was this colorful bar chart you put up, um, and you had some data pointing about that. You know, I mean, your market share is growing, you're continuing growth. You know, how, how do you look at the market landscape? What are people you know, still getting wrong? Yeah, I think that, uh, I don't think that we actually talked that much more or less about competitors in the keynote. Uh, there was a slide that had a color chart, that may have been the only difference, but you know, for us, uh, it, it's always about, you, you could spend so much of your time trying to look uh, at what others are doing and wondering what they're going to do. The reality is, if you don't stay focused on your customers and what they actually care about, you know, you're wasting your time. Talk about mobile um, and business years ago. Alexa for business is a new thing. Yeah. Voice, we heard from Werner today, it's a new interface. So we were talking on theCUBE, and this is the first time we're kind of talking about this concept, maybe we're the first ones to say it, so we'll just say it. Voice first strategy. Mobile first created a massive wealth creation, iPhone, new kinds of application development. Voice has that same feel voice first interface could spawn massive innovation. Yeah. What's your view there, your reaction? What do you guys talk about internally at Amazon in terms of a, how voice will take advantage of all your scale? Yeah, well, I, I, I strongly agree with what you heard Werner communicate in, the, in his keynote today, which is just, you know, when we first had phones that had apps and you could do all kinds of things by tapping on the phone, like that was revolutionary. But then when you experience a voice app, it makes tapping on your phone so circa 2010. <laughs> and so uh, I think that the world will have a huge amount of voice applications and it's going to be people's preference. And in part because it's just a more natural expression than actually tapping and trying to click and type things. And so we, uh, we had so many customers, almost a, a good chunk of our enterprise meetings that we have throughout the year, one of the things customers want to talk about is how can I actually be involved in using Alexa? How can I build skills for Alexa? And then over the last few months, that conversation has started to turn to, hey, are you thinking about making Alexa more useful inside of, of businesses and for work? And so there's so much applicability. Do you think that voice first is going to have the same kind of impact or more than the mobile trend? Or I think it has a chance to have as big an impact. I mean, all the devices have to continue to evolve and you can see that at, at Amazon, we're continuing to build all kinds of diverse devices, but I think voice is going to be a major mode of how people interact with software. All right, software. Andy, 42,000 people, I don't know how you top it. Congratulations on all your success and appreciate uh, the growth and um, you've done with the company, congratulations. And by the way, there's a record breaking chicken wing contest to Tonka. Yeah, we set a Guinness I World get Record that in there. yesterday. What is yeah. that about? Come on, tell us about this story. Well, uh, Tatanka is a buffalo wing eating club that we started in Seattle back in 1997. And uh, we go for wings. We used to go every Tuesday night for wings. Uh, and we have membership uh, standards. You can become a regular member if you eat 10 wings with five pasty wings. A pasty wing is, you know when the wing sauce sits at room temperature and it kind of congeals and gets pasty? So it's five wings wrapped in that paste. Platinum membership is 25 wings plus five pasties. Then we started having eating contests, and uh, we, we call it the Tonka Bowl. And so when we started reInvent, we very much wanted to have a conference that had a lot of interesting, fun, quirky events. And one of the ideas we had was we said, well, let's try an eating contest. And the first year we tried it, we did it at lunchtime down in the basement, and nobody wanted to have an eating contest at one o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of reInvent. So then we moved it to Lagasse Stadium here in the Venetian, and people started coming. So this year we had two groups of about 100 each, one at Lagasse, one at the MGM, and they, they did a 30 minute round, and then the top five wing eaters in each venue came back to one place for a second round, and the winner apparently ate a cumulative total of 59 wings. There were 3,857 wings consumed in the contest. <laughs> that awesome. sounds about as many features as Amazon has released <laughs> uh, since the first reInvent. Well, it sounds like you continue the momentum and you're eating away at the competition. Congratulations. Andy Jassy, CEO of Amazon Web Services in theCUBE. Thanks for coming in, really Thanks appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, I conference. appreciate it guys. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Live coverage here from Las Vegas, Amazon Web Services reInvent Annual Conference 2017's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. 
We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break.